if you're trying to help somebody change something, go from where they are to where they want to be with the help of your book. You have to know that what you're telling them actually works and isn't just a nice idea. You know, my mission is to help people write better books, the books that they envision. I'm hoping to change the conversation a little bit in publishing where we're not focused on speed, but we're focused on creating quality books. The reason that it's it's so cool is because I, I think a core message for any good book should be transformational on its own. When you get it right, then it becomes transformational when people hear it, even if they haven't read the book yet. The promise piece is essential because if you're promising something that can't be achieved, then you're only going to end up with disappointed people. Hello and welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast, the podcast that brings you the latest in the world of tutoring, edtech and education, and hopefully inspires in you the big change that each and every one of us is capable of. Qualified Tutor is an industry-leading tutor training organisation and online tutoring community for thousands of tutors around the world. This podcast is the voice of this community, where we aim to hear from tutors, Teachers, entrepreneurs, coaches, business experts, students, tutorpreneurs, and more from the world of tutoring about what inspires them every day, how they can help tutors like you, and what they've learnt about tutoring along the way. The question is, what will you learn today? Hello and welcome to the 118th episode of the Qualified Tutors podcast. My name is Ludo Miller, the host of this podcast. Uh, Welcome back to regular listeners. Welcome to any of you for whom this is uh, your first time listening to the Qualified Tutor podcast. And of course, a huge welcome to today's guest, uh, AJ Harper. AJ, welcome to the Qualified Tutor podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Listeners of ours, uh, as as you know, we have a great deal of respect and admiration for uh, a certain Mike Michalowicz, the, the entrepreneurial coach, um, motivational speaker, and author of many of uh, the best business books uh, out there, really. Um, so much so that we've uh, invited him onto the podcast to speak to you not once, uh, not twice, uh, but three separate uh, times. Uh, and Mike himself has said that there is no one else uh, he trusts more to develop his content than AJ Harper. Um, high praise indeed and, and uh, deserved uh, recognition for one of um, the finest author coaches and, and developmental editors there is out there. Um, regularly cited by many of the top authors in business as the reason for their success, uh, AJ has spent a career uh, mastering the art of uh, creating a narrative arc through writing that connects writer with reader and of fine-tuning that content um, to produce a publishing strategy that preserves that, that bestseller label uh, year after year. Now, AJ's philosophy is, um, and this is perhaps a secret to some, perhaps some know this, is, is inextricably tied into Qualified Tutor and, and Julia Silver's upcoming book, Tutoring Is Not Plan B. AJ and Julia have been working together for for a long time now, uh, and the features of AJ's best-selling style can be found throughout the book, even though it's only draft form. Um, So that book will be coming out soon, um, and I'm going to say now get ready to register uh, or listen back to this episode when it does come out uh, to pick up on some of the subtleties from AJ that you might have missed the (laughs) first time around. Now, AJ, just before we... um, get into this uh, conversation um you have a book of your own that was released this year do you not do you mind telling yes. us a little bit more about that book sure happy to it's called write a must read and it's a long time coming it's based on 17 years in publishing and it's a book I thought I'd never write um but I decided to write because my workshop students uh Julia is an alum of my workshop were had such great results that was since I knew I could teach what I had done on my own for years, 
I decided that I wanted to make it available to as many people as possible so that, you know, even if you didn't have the money for a course or even the money to buy the book, you could check it out from the library and learn these skills. That was really important to me to make it available to more people. And so the book came out on March 20, uh, May 24th, and uh, it's available where all books are sold. And if there's one reason, AJ, one reason why someone listening to this now should go and pick up a copy of Writer Must Read, what is that reason? Well, you know, my mission is to help people write better books, the books that they envision. I'm hoping to change the conversation a little bit in publishing where we're not focused on speed, but we're focused on creating quality books. And I think that there's a, the main takeaway, the main reason, not the main takeaway, but the main reason you should go get the book is because there is this myth that we need to be of a certain level of talent or ability to write a must read book. And you do need a team of editors to help you out. But what you really need, what cuts through that talent factor doesn't make it irrelevant, but it's less relevant is focusing on your reader. So in the book, I teach how the same frameworks that Julia learned and it helps you to get past that big question mark of is my idea good enough and am I good enough to write it? So if you have those questions where you're feeling like, I think I want to write a book, but I don't think I can write a good one or I'm not sure if my idea is good enough. This book will give you the confidence and tools to be able to pull it off. That's, uh, that's a pretty good elevator pitch, AJ. Um, <laughs> now, I'm sure, I'm sure you're uh, well-versed in the works of, of Simon Sinek, and, and uh, regular listeners will know what we refer back to Simon's work uh, often at the start of episodes just to get a sense of our, of our speaker and that, of our guest, sorry, and that, the question that we tend to frame that with is, is around your why. So, AJ, could you tell us a little bit more about what, your why is and how, how you came to, 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 to live that? You know, I think um, as a ghostwriter, I was a ghostwriter for 10 years. And my specialty is the, what I teach now, which is prescriptive nonfiction or personal and professional development books, business, spirituality, relationships, health, um, any sort of self-improvement or business improvement. And I just noticed a pattern of people just... Um, trying to get books out as fast as they could. But then the problem was the dreams they had for those books, the work that they put into them could not support the dreams they had. And there was just a lot of heartbreak, also a lot of heartbreak in terms of getting misinformation about what the world of publishing is really about. And I think anytime that we can demystify that process, it becomes easier to take it on and we can make good decisions. So my why is to elevate it you know, elevate this pursuit of getting a book done so that we're not just getting it done. We're actually putting something magic out into the world. I mean, a book is, my life's work is in that book. And you can go to any library and get somebody's life's work or what their work they worked on for years for check it out for free. Or if you have the cash, you can get it for a few bucks. And that's wonderful. And it should be uh, it should be taken with great care, right? Putting that book out into the world. So I'm hoping that people will will take on the quality factor, that that will become very important. But also I want to give real information about publishing so that hearts aren't broken because we're leading people down a path of this is easy and fast and here's a template and a formula and all you have to do is this. But we're putting art out into the world and it's not as simple as that. So if we are well-informed people who uh, take the charge for quality seriously, then I, I think more dreams can come true and fewer hearts broken. And that's my personal why. Okay, let's go. Welcome everyone to this, uh, the uh, 11 a.m. event on uh, Monday the 24th of January at the Love Tuning Festival. Okay, here we go. So, the first prize that we are going to give away today is... Number nine! 
um, number nine is I, I need an extra monitor. That's what I need. So welcome to uh, the 2 p.m. keynote at the Love Tutoring Festival uh, day to Tuesday the 25th of January. It's 2 p.m. Uh, UK time where many of us here are based. Our speaker today is Michael Bungate Stanier, who is um, a, as you can see here, Wall Street uh, Journal best-selling author on coaching. Maybe I hand it back to Ludo as a kind of what needs to be said to wrap us up here. Well, uh, Michael, you've made my job very simple. It doesn't really need to be much more said. That was um, that was world class. Yes, for those of you wondering, those were just a few highlights from the incredible Love Tutoring Festival too that took place at the end of January of this year, 2022. The big news from Qualified Tutor and the Love Tutoring Festival team is that we're back from Monday the 27th of June to Friday the 1st of July. The Love Tutoring Festival 3 will return. The focus of this festival is on alignment and new beginnings. The festival will have a slightly different feel to it, but all of the main tenets will still be there. A host of amazing speakers, including world-renowned leaders in education, such as Craig Barton will be joining us for a festival fanfare of training and of connection. Those are the values which hold the Love Tutoring Festival together and those are the values that we want you to come and take part in over the week of the festival. Head to qualifiedtutor.org slash love dash tutoring dash festival or simply head to our website qualifiedtutor.org to find out more and book your ticket today. Now, um, Julia is clearly someone who's brought into that why that you've just talked about uh, <laughs> yourself, AJ, that why, you know. Um, Julia has has loved working with you through the book. You know, I get excited calls at any time of the day about a session she's just had with you and how, you know, she's just managed to to blast through a really good, you know, draft chapter. Um, and and Julia is well known in in the tutoring industry for the phrase tutoring is not Plan B. But credits you, AJ, with the invention uh, of this phrase. I wanted to um, see if you could give listeners a bit of a sense of what that phrase means to you and and how you think this book might change the the world of tutoring. Well, first let me say she she credits me, but it's just a process. It's I didn't actually come up with it. I helped her discover it. And it's what she always believed. I think it's what I call a core message, by the way. So she followed my advice as well. And she started talking about it way before the book was done. And now she's speaking about it. This is now she's known for this. But that's really her value system that she already had. It's not like I said, hey, what if you said this? She actually came to that on her own following the frameworks and I I helped her solidify it. So credit to Julia. But the reason that it's it's so cool is because I, I think a core message for any good book should be transformational on its own. This is very difficult to get to it. And I really put Julia through her paces. Uh, But what happens is when you get it right, then it becomes transformational when people hear it, even if they haven't read the book yet. And I don't know what you're all experiencing, but she's told us that people really resonated with hearing that. And under, it usually comes back to the reader and what they're feeling and who they are and, and what needs to shift. So when you think of a core message, whether it's for your business or for a book, you want one that really makes people go, oh, I have to switch my the way I think about this in order to get the things I want. And so tutoring is not plan B is, you know, Julia's heart, what she believes, her philosophy But it also speaks to your tutoring community of people who maybe need a reframe about, you know, because society or people in their world is teaching them that tutoring is plan B, then that affects how you conduct your business, how you feel about it, whether you stay in it, what you charge. And by making that shift to say, no, it's not, it's not plan B. Now you're holding yourself differently. Uh, making plans differently, building your business differently. 
And that's the power of that message. Before she even finished the book, she completely brought that out. And that's the beauty of a truly transformational core message that people remember. So obviously, AJ, you help people write books. And Mm -hmm. part of that is creating, you know, clearly a stage of that process is helping them find the core message. But but what does understanding, what does having a core message, what impact can that have as, as the public face of someone's brand? Whether you write a book or not, do you think a core message is, is the fundamentals of, of building the brand anyway? I do. I do. I think I've had many students say that the work they did and the fundamentals, you know, we have these fundamental pieces we need for a book before we start writing it. Core message is one. And that once they got clarity around those fundamentals, it changed their whole business because they were able to refine their marketing and their focus. And uh, that's not what I teach necessarily, but it's a bonus of that happens. And I, anytime you have clarity around who you serve, which is the first step in one of the fundamentals is knowing who your reader is. So for business, it would be who you serve. Your message to them, that's transformational, right? The core message, the main thing. Not all the things you're going to talk about, but the thing you really wholeheartedly believe that if they would just understand this one thing, that things could change. Things could be better and they could get what they want. Having that changes all your conversations, makes it easier for you to communicate, makes it easier for you to market your business, and also helps you decide if you want to take on different projects or not, because maybe it doesn't fit with that reader and that message. And the third is a promise, having a promise you can actually deliver. That's vital for any business as it is for the book. So going a little bit deeper on that thread then, AJ, clearly as someone who has combined authorship with building, a, you know, your own brand, your own business, you know, through, through over the years, what, what do you think authorship and, and, and writing books as, as, a, as a kind of subsector, as a, as a subsector of business, but as its own kind of industry what can that tell us about how we build our brands in today's world well i mean the promise piece is essential because if you're promising something that can't be achieved then you're only going to end up with disappointed people but also i think it it works like this when it comes to a book and it can work in a business too deciding what is the promise you can deliver within the confines of the pages so if it was for, t- for tutoring, what can you deliver within the time period you're supposed to be tutoring, right? What's action, actually manageable? Maybe that's a set series of tutoring sessions, or maybe it's during a school year. Um, but making it really clear, instead of setting a goal that seems pie in the sky, right? So it's managing those expectations, but it's actually the reverse is true as well. I want, she said, I really want to promise this Maybe you need to modify it and bring it down, but maybe instead you need to rise up to it. So if you wanted to say, I want to promise this thing, but I don't know if I can, first ask yourself, well, what do I have to do so I can? Then that elevates you in the process. And in the book, it's deciding, okay, how do I, what other stories, content, research, action steps, exercises, whatever, what else do I need to do? to actually deliver on the promise, now you have a, a better book because you challenged yourself. So it's, it's both sides. It's managing expectations so you can deliver, but also challenging yourself to see if you could maybe deliver this other thing. What could you do? And as teachers, that's a great question because you're always solving those problems about how to reach people. So I think that's a good way to look at it for your business as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you've worked with a lot of a lot of big authors who, who, who manage their own businesses as well. Um, does that, at, at what stage do you tend to work with, with a business owner in the author, in their authorship journey? Is there a particular point where authorship becomes part of a person's business? Yes. I think it's once you have, um, once you have that clear distinction about what you do versus what other people do, and very often it's when you also have a tested framework or process or message of some kind that you already have, you could have shown that this thing works, whatever you do, 
that's the point where you can start authorship. You don't have to be a certain income level. You don't have to be a speaker. You don't have to be the best person in your industry by some strange standard. You just have to be able to say, this is what I know to be true. And I can show you because of these experiences. And I know this works. You don't want to write a book, at least not prescriptive nonfiction. Memoir is really different, right? That anytime you want. But if you're trying to help somebody change something, go from where they are to where they want to be with the help of your book, you have to know that what you're telling them actually works and isn't just a nice idea. So turning to to your book then, as as a small case study, AJ, why did then, why did you feel that now was the time to write a book that took your intended audience for Writer Must Read, your, your latest book. Why was now the time to write that book? Why was now the time to take people from, from where they were before to where they are after reading the book? Well, I share in the book that when I quit ghostwriting, retired from it, I honestly had no plans to teach anything, but it was Mike McAllowitz who called BS on me and said that I was letting my ego get in the way of helping people because I had this belief I know what I do, but I can't teach that thing. I have my own super, super mojo, intuitive stuff I do. I can't teach that. So once I knew that I could teach it, and I had so many books out there in the world from students who absolutely achieved exactly what they wanted with the book, I thought, okay, let me make this available to folks who can't afford my class. Honestly, that was it. I didn't grow up with very much. And uh, the thought that people had to make me of a certain income level to be able to work with me. Um, like there's, I'm running a small business and I like to keep it small. So that's not going to change. So how can I get this information to people if I'm not going to be scaling up on my workshop? Meaning I'm not going to be doing it for thousands of people or even hundreds of people. So I just felt, let me get a book out there that even if you don't have the cash to buy it, you could go to your library and get it. That was just important to my value system. That's why now. Yeah, I think I think that's as important a message for other potential or, or even current authors as as any other um, today. I, I, I'm interested to know, AJ, you, you've you've walked that path from not being an author to being an author and along the way also helping hundreds, if not thousands, is it into the thousands of people you've helped? For sure. For sure. So there's <laughs> tens of thousands of books out there that you've, you've helped to, to craft and create. Well, not tens of thousands of books. I've definitely worked with a more, more than a thousand authors. I don't even know how many. I haven't written books for all of those people, just so we're clear. I've had many roles in publishing. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yes, go on. I just want to, I didn't want to, man, that, I would be dead. If that, if that were true, tens of thousands, but go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for, for reining me in. Um, how then, and you have, you've talked about this slightly already, but, but, but I wanted to focus on this a little bit more. How does someone go from mastering their, their own business, their own niche, to, to, writing, to, to taking the first steps to writing a book? The first step is to just get clear clarity about your audience. That is number one. And most people don't realize that that clarity, and I'll talk about that in the talk, um, it, that clarity is everything because it's what carries you through the entire process, even through marketing. Where a lot of authors go wrong is they decide who their reader is, and then they kind of, it's not their fault. They're not doing anything wrong, but they kind of forget about them once they decide. So it's about carrying your reader. It's like, taking them as a guide, like Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, just taking them through the process all the way on the journey and being mindful of them on every page. So you have to have that clarity before you do anything else. And that is important work. It, it takes a little bit of time to really get clear, not about the demographics per se, maybe a little bit of demographics. I'm not talking about an avatar. I'm just talking about hearts and minds, really getting clear about who you want to work with, who you want to hang out with for the foreseeable future, and what's what do they really want and what's standing in their way. And if you can get that clarity, then that is the beginning of the process. Well, I think you'll be you'll have made a whole bunch of people be be listening into this now 
cogs turning in the mind of that, who their audience is, making sure that they, you know, they, they set aside time to, to focus on that. Because as you say, it's such a fundamental part that people perhaps you know, push past um, early on. Just kind of tying, drawing to a close here, AJ, um, we love to know on this podcast what's next for our guests. Now, the first thing that's next, and you're alluding to it just then, if you listeners were slightly unsure what AJ meant by um, at the talk, AJ will be headlining uh, the Tuesday at the upcoming Love Tutoring Festival. So that's Tuesday, the 28th of uh, June, the, the pre-lunch slot at 12 p.m., um, where she will be talking uh, about how to write a, a must-read business book. So you know, even if writing a book is not on your 2022 agenda, there is so much, uh, as AJ was talking about just there, about learning about your business and your brand through the process that goes into writing a book. And I think that's, that's massive. That's huge. And, and I think um, that is the key takeaway that you, our audience, will take from, from AJ's session there. And so that promises to be a really, really high value session. So session, sorry. So that, that's what's coming up next for AJ in QT land. But AJ, for you, what's, what's next for you? Well, I, I'm continuing to serve my students. So I teach my workshop twice a year. So I'll have one coming up in the fall. And, um, I, and I have a, a couple of fun workshops I'm doing over the summer. And then I'm working on Mike's next book. So, you know, keep him, keep him busy with that. Okay, so Mike, Mike will be coming back on for a fourth appearance. Yes. In the, in the spring of 2023. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. AJ, thank you so, so much um, for, for, for jumping on with us here. Um, as I said, um, the Love Tutoring Festival is where you can catch AJ next uh, in as part of uh, the QT sphere. Um, the link to the festival will be in the show notes where you can grab your free ticket to see AJ and, and a bunch of other um, ticket options there as well and um, so that's uh not very long at all that's starting uh next week um which will be uh monday the 27th of june so so we're really really excited for that but aj um thank you very much for coming on i, I hope you enjoyed talking about uh, what you do. thank you thank you very much uh, and we'll see you all next time thank you so much Thank you for listening to this episode of the Qualified Tutor Podcast. Whether you're a regular listener of this podcast or you've just stumbled across it, join the Qualified Tutor Podcast group within the Qualified Tutor community to stay up to date with our latest news, offers, workshops, and of course, simply to meet other tutors like you. Whatever your level as a tutor, our training courses will be the next step in your professional development. Visit qualifiedtutor.org slash training to find out more about our CPD accredited and Ofqual recognised courses, the first of their kind in the tutoring industry. Your student deserves the best tutor possible. Make that happen today by joining Qualified Tutor.